Hello, everybody. Wonderful to come here and um, maybe give you a little bit of new perspective on the topics that we have been talking today. Because I want to talk about... Emotions. <laughs> Technique is not working. Let's see. Five seconds. Okay. Well, I will start anyway. Um, what I want to present to you today is that in addition to these digital things and all these things, we are all humans. And by teaching our people how to understand and lead emotions, we can take a huge step in our productivity, in our innovations, creativity, well-being. And it all wraps around, around the term daring to be human. And I want to today show you that how easily this can be added to this, all these other facility management things that you are already learning. Now, so how this is going to be necessary also if you want to be competitive in the future. And now you might be thinking that uh, emotions, and daring to be human, and business life, that doesn't really add up. And I agree. <laughs> yes, I agree, because um, when I used to be a management consultant, uh, these emotions and human characteristics were not the top priority. The top priority was that I perform, that I'm predictable, and there was quite tight box on what kind of person they wanted me to be. They wanted me to be in this gray area. You could say that, that quite numb. So this human characteristic, for example, positive emotions, being excited, that wasn't so wanted thing, or showing negative emotions. And even though I have this business background, I also draw. And during those years as a management consultant who was supposed to you know, be creative and do this, all these things, I drew this kind of drawing in my notebook, where I decided that, OK, I will put this kind of armor on so that I will protect myself against two things. First of all, so that I wouldn't show all these you know, personal traits that I had. I was, for example, according to my boss, I was performing well, but Camilla, you are too excited. So I was like, okay, I will try to be cool and calm. But another thing which was equally important was that this armor protected me against these maybe little bit nasty comments that my team members who were stressed might have. You know, when people are stressed, they are not behaving very good. So that would also protect me in that way. But now I want to stop here and think that how are these kind of people going to succeed in the future? Do, do you want your people to be like this, behave like this? If we look at the science, if we look at the th listen to thinkers of today, many of them say no, definitely no. For example, no, World Economic Forum lists out every year their predictions of, of the skills that we need in the future. And this is one of, their, one of their predictions. And if you look at the list, you can see that things like analytical thinking, creativity, complex problem solving, emotional intelligence, these are not the kind of skills that you can just read from the book. 
Yes, you can study, but you, 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 you don't find one right answer to creativity, for example. Instead, it's more about your mindset and your ability to be and handle this, this more complex, uh, more not linear things, instead of just these linear logical things that we normally in the business life say. We say that, that behave this way, I was even ordered what to wear. All these things that are predictable. But all those things that World Economic Forum said, they are more like this kind of stuff that you just have to be comfortable with. And as we have heard, we're going to going to get so much help from artificial intelligence and technologies. And it's amazing how they will you know, process the information and give us the data and combine things. And we should really welcome them. But at the same time, we have a pressure, an opportunity to, as a humans, to utilize the best part of, parts of ourselves, which are still quite quite much ahead of the computers. Things like understanding social rules, that is really difficult to put into the algorithms that behave like this, and when somebody says this, then say this. Emotional intelligence, that is not linear. I cannot give you Excel on how to behave in this kind of encounter. Reading weak signals, combining strange things, these are all examples of what we humans are still better than computers. And I want to pick now one of the things from the list and really show you that how important it is that we teach our people to understand this kind of nonlinear things. And the thing is, my passion, emotions which I teach to companies many times a week. And really, the possibility that when our people know how to handle and understand emotions, how much better we can perform. But many times when I say to my clients that, okay, emotions, they are like, yes, Camilla, this is really important because they know that, okay, they have to say that, you, yes, emotions are important. But they are saying that, um, yes, Camilla, but we are professionals. We are rational. We are like, uh, like, yes, these emotions are important, but we are concentrating on this linear logical stuff. But I say to them that actually, do you know, that if you don't know how to handle this emotional side, you lose the rational side. Because, for example, fear, anxiety, stress, these are all huge triggers to us. They are no little things. They trigger our older system, this system that has three possibilities, fight, flight, or freeze. And in those situations when we have this kind of threat in front of us, and our system says that, okay, there's a threat, there's a lion, then our cognitive skills, this prefrontal cortex, which is, is the modern man's leading place, that is going to be second when the, when the older part takes over, because we have to stay alive. And, and really, I'm so excited that, you know, when we learn how to understand emotions, we understand that, for example, fear, it's really smart how it behaves. Fear, and this is the science of fear, fear makes our thinking really narrow. Because it was so smart system, developed over millions of years, that it says to our system that concentrate on the lion, concentrate on the threat, don't look at the sunshine, don't look at anything else, because now the most important thing is to stay alive. But what if our lion, our threat, is the deadline? It's the cognitive problem that we cannot solve. It's the client, something happening there. And our thinking is narrow. It should be wide so that we could come up with a solution to our problem. And I drew this in my 
management consultant years when I was sitting on my desk and trying to solve Excel-related calculation problem, and I noticed how the energy, the fear was putting on my body. I could feel it rushing in, in the palms of my hands. They were sweating and stomach bubbling. That's the sign how the, the body is trying to give you energy to fight. And all the time, more and more mistakes came. Skills were going down. But this situation is, is not necessary. When people know how to lead their emotions and understand emotions, there are tons of things that they can do to cope with this situation. And in this situation, this person is no, not productive, not smart. So we have to teach individuals how to understand emotions. But what happens when this person goes and, you know, is in contact with, uh, with the client or with the team member? It's probably like this. He's, he or she is not hearing anything that the other people, person is saying. He's completely thinking about the problem and, and not being present and thinking about the future. That, oh, God, oh my God, my deadline, how am I going to solve that problem? Wah, bah, bah. And the other one is feeling that, okay, you are not interested, you are not listening to me. And the, the team member will feel that he or she is not appreciated. The client feels that, okay, no. So our relationships at work will go down too. And if we, if we look at the studies that have been made about what are the best teams, what is the characteristic of the best client relationship. One of the top words that comes up is trust. That when we have trust with our client, then our client, you know, when he or she trusts us, he will be most often loyal, will most often not be price sensitive, will tell us about the problems, will tell us how we can develop. And of course, in teams, if we have trust, like Google's five-year five -year study concluded, this psychological safety. When we have psychological safety, that's the, the, the characteristic of the best teams. And they concluded in one report that, that in, in these kind of teams, you are able to talk about things that are messy and sad and have the hard conversations with your colleagues that are driving you crazy. And I call that human. That is not this kind of armor behavior. That is something else. So, but how can we create trust? Not this way. Because actually we human animals are really good at reading other people, even though we don't understand that. And science says that over 90% of our communications is something else than words. So if we are in the, with our client or with our colleague, and we are trying to say the right things, we are, not, we are not trustworthy if our other communication channels are saying something else. We have tens of muscles in our faces only to express these micro-expressions. And we don't realize that we, we can read them, but we can. So in order for us to create environments where there are trust, we all need to be able to lead our own emotions so that we are trustworthy ourselves when we are in their encounters. So in the beginning, with the fire picture, I showed you that how strong this negative spiral is that if we don't know how to lead our emotions. But the good news is that the spiral is positive also, and it's equally strong. Because when we know how to calm ourselves, for example, we push this kind of safe button in our head. And when we push this safe button, our body relaxes, and it says that, okay, there's no lion, you can relax. You can trust, you can be here as you are. 
And that opens up all these amazing human qualities that we have. Just like what the, what the report it stated. When we are relaxed and feel safe, then we are present, we hear what the other people are saying, we get more information, we have space in our heads because we are not thinking about the future or past. We are here, we have cognitive skills, we become more creative because we can combine things on, in, on those spaces. Because we are safe, we, we are not afraid that somebody is going to roll their eyes on our ideas or there might be negative consequences on our behavior. In that kind of trusting environment, we can courageously say out loud our ideas. We become more vulnerable, more risk-taking. And we need those ideas to develop further and to become more innovative company. And in, in this kind of safe space, when you are relaxed, you also might be able to reach these flow states, which are completely the best ways to be productive. This is, for example, what Kotler has been able to prove in studies, that when people really can be at this stage, they are over 500% more productive than you know, in this kind of state when you're just thinking this narrowly. So, in the future, let's skip this Teflon part when we just try to be all the same and behave a certain way that would predict our success in the future. And instead, embrace these different qualities that we persons have. I, for example, I am a combination of business background, drawing, enthusiasm about emotions, and it's okay. And I bet that people in your companies, or you, are special combinations of skills. And I can tell you that when people like this come to solve the problem, this somebody who is introvert and engineer background, he has a unique perspective on the problem that is really difficult to put into the algorithms. So I dare you to, first of all, teach your people how to understand and lead emotions and dare to be human. Thank you. <laughs>